But our next guest uh, sitting in the studio is a remarkable uh, winning entrepreneur. In fact, he once won the Inspiring Entrepreneur of the Year. I thought all entrepreneurs were inspiring, but clearly our next guest must be uh, more than most. He's got a Gladiator Mastery event which kicks off in about a month on the 18th of March. And Darius Sudi is in studio. Great to have you in here. Thank you for inviting me. It's my honour. It's great to have you in. Now, uh, you can hear you've got a bit of an English accent from your time in Manchester, but originally from Iran, and now you're living here in, in, yes. in the UAE. Last couple of years since COVID, we've seen so many people be inspired by losing their jobs or seeing the fragility of their industry that they're in, and they're therefore thinking, you know what, I need to go it alone. I need to back myself. I need to realize that I can't I can't sack myself, so I want to start my own business. You work with a lot of people, coaching them, coaching people how to sell, coaching how people how to be an entrepreneur. What takes someone, what does it take for someone to get up and leave their job and say, I want to be an entrepreneur? I think first of all, if you if you you've asked me a couple of really good questions. When you when you study very successful people, they're not always driven by their goals. They're driven by paranoia also. So what you find is somebody like Elon Musk doesn't actually, he's one of the most competitive human beings on the planet. He doesn't want to just be the richest. He doesn't want to lose the spot of the richest person. So paranoia comes naturally with successful people. So it's not all about being goal driven. What happens change, very smart people implement change by choice. Others change happens to them and then they respond. So what I would like to really work with people who actually are unhappy and they're having unfulfilled lives just don't have the answers and they're asking the right questions and i like to assist people to to implement positive change in their lives because especially when it comes to money when it comes to money business entrepreneurial it, it's all about money and most people due to the upbringing have a negative association when it comes to money money is not uh, doesn't grow on trees money is root of all evil rich people aren't good people these are all things that unfortunately our parents have taught us and it's often not true because because we we get caught up in jobs and one of the hardest things i think in some people great example of that is asking for a pay rise you know because they get emotional and and uh, i've seen it work i, I work in, in music a lot and uh, people that are really into their music they have someone else do their deals for them because they get too emotionally attached to their work Amazing. that they've got to have an agent that's why actors they have agents because they're so emotionally attached and people in this day and age do get attached to their job for what they put in and therefore I think uh, that emotional relationship with their job and, and what their job has in terms of their social status and their sense of identity and then they start to think about the money and that I think that's part of where it gets confused in their mind, the relationship of, 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 of what their job really is and that's helping someone else higher up the chain bring in more money. Correct, correct. First of all, job, I believe, stands for just over broke. You're never going to get rich in a job, okay? Uh, secondly is that you never get a brain surgeon going over the counter and negotiating on the, on the, the cost of the medicine. So my suggestion is if you want to actually add, just keep adding value. Make yourself irreplaceable. Mm. And then when you approach someone, it's easy to give them a pay increase because they can't afford to replace you. What, what, is the, what is the single most unique trait you've seen when you're working with people that helps them sort of unleash and get over those internal demons? What, 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 what is different between those people that are just happy to turn up and have their job and whinge that things are never going to get better without actually taking action and those that are Elon Musk? Beautiful. First of all, in my company, we have 130 staff. If you're going to turn up in my business, I suggest you turn up earlier than five to nine because if I'm at work at seven and you turn up at eight, I get to notice you more. If you stay a little bit longer, I get to notice you. It shows commitment. Also, come to your bosses with solutions so you're thinking outside the box mm -hmm. rather than just reactive problems. So um, don't waste time. Be efficient with your time. Do things at speed. Deliver on your promises. All those things go a long way in adding value to you in, the, in an organization. One of the things you are doing is you've got an event that's coming up tomorrow. It's a live workshop located at the Media Ratana in Dubai in Barsha Heights uh, between 11 and 3. So if you take uh, Darush's word, get there at 10.30. He might see you <laughs> and get a better relationship. For anyone who's wanting to get down there tomorrow, uh, what can they expect? Who's it for? Uh, it's for, first of all, when we talk about sales, it's for salespeople. Now, the moment I say sales, 
internally we think of uh, a sales, sales department, somebody, a sales department, a salesperson, an entrepreneur, client service, anybody client facing. The challenge is that the moment I say sales, people imagine somebody who's a fast talker, doesn't listen, sells something to somebody Sleazy they don't car want. Salesman. Exactly. But due to 21st century, due to the internet, things have changed. So what you want to do is, a salesperson is somebody who fixes other people's headaches. So the 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 challenge, the technique, the is in the listening skills, building relationship skills and not selling something. So what I intend to do is show people that if you're really interested in somebody else and fixing their problems, you can sell them anything. Because the first rule of sales is it comes through trust and likability of the person. And the only way you can build it is through listening skills, asking the right questions, showing genuine enthusiasm about the other person's life or their business. And that makes you a great salesperson. So if you notice, when you meet salespeople, they have every single type apart from sales on the business card business development manager they got area this manager relationship that man. but coordinator it, but they're all sales because they're embarrassed of the word sales what I want to do is I want to say that if you're a salesperson you should be very very proud of it because often a great salesperson earns more than the CEO of the company so tomorrow I've got guest speakers we're gonna teach different ways of being able to influence others to come your way, fix their headache, and get paid for it. You're not going to stand up and say to people, sell me this pen. You're not going to go through all those. The uh, the Jordan Belfort t- uh, tactic, have you seen that one? Uh, yes, yes, yes. We, we, I do that in another session. <laughs> but it's, it's not a pen. It's not a pen. Okay. But um, the fact is that if you really believe in your products or services and what you what problems you're fixing, then you can easily charge for it. The problem is that most people don't value their expertise and their experience. Yeah. So they find I, I, it difficult. I'm, I'm so guilty of that. Yes. And like a lot of people are. You, yes. you tend to undersell yourself or, um, yeah, you, you, I wouldn't say aggressive enough, but, but sometimes there's an element of separating the business from the job. Yeah. First of all, business is not personal. Okay. Unfortunately, you are the product. When you're going out selling, you, say you are the. I could never be a model. Not the fact that I'm not very well, attractive. Know. You're selling but the point a bit is sure. that if I get rejected, I might take it personally. Yeah. But the fact that maybe they're not looking for a bold Iranian in that title role, you know, or that picture. So it's not personal. It just sometimes doesn't fit. That could be doing a movie on Joe Rogan. And you'd be perfect. Correct. Or Donna White. Yeah, right? Donna White. Yeah. I'll get away with it. Yeah. 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 Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So I get it all. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, you need to you need to add value. You need to differentiate yourself in the marketplace and look at the problems that you're fixing. If they bring you as a DJ into a place and you get to get people to stay an hour longer, how much revenue is that for them? Yeah. Okay. And what you charge is nothing compared to the revenue that they're going to bring in into the room. Well, I remember that next time I've got a gig. I remember I started doing. Uh, I play a lot of live music, guitar and singing, and uh, I was at a venue the other night and it was an experiment and uh, I packed up. And then the, everyone around was like, oh, are they doing live music here now? Oh, they were all excited. They were about to sit down. And I did. I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All these extra people are all about to buy another three drinks. And exactly. suddenly you... Exactly. So what you do is you use that experience and that um, uh, increase in revenue and, and share it with your future prospects. And say, guess what happened? Three times I did these events, people stayed. And on average, I increased the revenue by 2,500. All I'm asking for is 750 dollars extra. Is it simple enough to say that we're all in sales or is that too simplistic? We're all in sales. As parents, that because children are selling to you why you should buy their toys, you selling to them why they should go out for dinner. You, you're constantly selling. It's just that we don't like the word selling. But the fact is now your prospect knows about your products and services more than you do because they're Googling you all the time. By the time you leave the office, they know more about your products or service than you do. So to, to try to sell something that they don't want, it's just old fashioned. It doesn't work and the relationship doesn't last. When I went back and did my, my master's, uh, there was a, a lesson we learned uh, that was a Harvard Business School review. And they made a point that in any job, bar maybe you know high-end brain surgeons, in any job, skill is really only 20%. And the other 80% is those softer skills. It's your relationships, uh, your attitude, your willingness to learn, your willingness to admit mistakes, you know, how you engage in teamwork. Would you agree with that? I say skills is 5%. Ten okay. percent is habitual, is discipline. Um, business is a marathon, not a sprint. And often entrepreneurs get bored very easily, so they don't have that consistency. Is that why they've always got like investments in eight different companies? Correct, which is wrong. 
you only do that when you got enough your baskets are full so you you covered the rent the, or, you've, or covered you've made all your enough payments. money the vc guys that, are coming at you correct exactly which thank goodness i'm in that position right now so every single month i invest in different companies but a few years back i wasn't so what you need to do you need to focus your money you need to focus your effort and all your intentions to one place because once you focus water can burn through steel right but when you're dispersing all your focus and your time valuable time you're not going to get anywhere in life Great, great inspirational words. You can hear more of this uh, if you want to be a part of the live workshop at the Media Retana in Dubai, Barsha Heights, tomorrow uh, from 11. Uh, Darish Saudi is the founder of Be Unique Group and uh, Arena, which is based in Dubai. Thank you very much for coming Thank in. You. This has been a pleasure. And uh, good, luck to, good luck tomorrow at that live workshop. Thank you so much. We have over 200 people attending, so it'd be absolutely outstanding. And love to invite you there if you can make it. TSB Talk Sport Business on Talk 100.